Streamline Back Shop Services presents the first of our first installation of our how to series on uh, DCC decoder installation and uh, other various topics and techniques. Tonight's subject is soldering magnet wire to surface mount LEDs. Uh, these are the, the SMDs. This is an 0805. Uh, there are uh, 0402s, uh, which are the smallest. There's an 0603, which is about a half a millimeter by one. Uh, the 0805, I think, is uh, one and a half by two, and the 1206 is like uh, maybe two by three. Uh, there's uh, some specific information on all of the items that we have for sale. Uh, I forget the exact sizes off the top of my head, but uh, but these are really tiny lights, and they're really really nice um, for mounting in uh, scale models. Uh, they can be used in model trains, model cars, model planes. Um, the applications are endless, but the biggest problem with using them is, of course, the, the size of the wire. The smaller the LED, the harder it is to put a big wire on it. So we're going to use 38-gauge uh, magnet wire uh, that's available from SBS for DCC.com as well. Uh, I've got uh, two pre-cut pieces, um, one red and one green. Uh, I always use the green on the cathode or the negative side uh, just for consistency. Uh, other tools required are a, a soldering iron. Uh, mine's an adjustable. Uh, I've got the heat set at about 730 Fahrenheit. Um, need uh, some soldering flux. This is Dutch Boy Tinning Flux. Oops. Dutch Boy Tinning Flux. Um, I've been using this for years and uh, works great with soldering uh, the copper wires. No, it's not a, an electronic flux, um, but I've never seen it eat a copper pipe in half, so it doesn't seem to uh, have affected any of my original installations in any way. So. Um, And it, it, it really, really works well, uh, I think, as you'll see as we go here. Um, other tools are a pair of locking pliers to hold the LED with, uh, or, I'm sorry, locking tweezers. Um, the other optional technique for holding the LED is a block of wood with uh, some scotch uh, double-sided removable poster tape. Um, I use that for the really, really small ones <laughs> that I can't fit in the tweezers. I, I just like the tweezers. It's a, a nice, simple technique. Um, but the basic process will work just as well with the uh, the tape. The only problem with the tape is it doesn't hold the LED quite as well. Uh, there are other brands of, of tackier tape. Uh, I'm always a little hesitant to use anything tackier. Uh, I just use a set of uh, Zeron... Uh, track nippers for uh, to cut the wire so uh, so our, our, our project we have for our project we have a, an 0805 LED we have a 1000 ohm resistor uh, available from SBS for DCC also the LED is and uh, a couple pieces of pre-cut wire uh, just for consistency again on the back of the LED there is a Uh, I don't know if you can see it, it's a, a, a tiny arrow, um, and I always say the arrow points to the minus, so I always put it face up, uh, and, and if you do it, uh, if you doesn't matter whether you do it exactly the way I do it or not, it, the, the trick is to develop a routine that works well for you, so that whenever you uh, assemble these, you always assemble them in the same 
use the same process to put them together. Uh, so I put it in my tweezers uh, with the with the two solder pads facing me, arrow pointing up. Uh, I use a little toothpick, dab it in my goop, and just wipe a, a little bit on the uh, solder pads. Don't have to be super neat. Uh, I lay my pad on the uh, or my tweezers down on my workbench here. And I'm going to take uh, a little bit more of my, and I always do this, this isn't necessarily important, but it just saves a lot of handling time if you uh, go ahead and get your resistor ready, dab a little bit of the, the flux on that, dab a little bit on the end of your wire. Get a little ball of solder. I'm using uh, 032 rosin core, um, 6040 rosin core solder. Uh, I get a little bit on the end of my, a little ball on the end of my iron, and I just rub my, run my wire down into that. I'm just going to lay the wire. up against there, and that's in place. And I'm going to take and wipe a little bit of the resin or of my flux that I have on the end of my resistor on the end of this other end of the wire. I'm going to tin it. This is this is what you call tinning a wire. Uh, and then I'm just going to straighten it out. I'm going to lay it on the uh, end of the resistor. And wipe it on. I'm going to flip my LED. Load my wire lead. And repeat the process again. I'll take my flux. I'm going to wipe a little bit on the first end of the wire. And put just a, a little bit on the, the end of my resistor. I'll tin my my magnet wire. I'm just going to Lay it on the, the LED, touch the ball of solder to it, it's in place, square my wire away, give me a little dab of flux, tin the wire. So now we have a wired assembly. Before I twist the wire, I always like to uh, just very quickly give it a an electrical test with my high tech handy dandy LED tester. It's just a nine volt battery with a couple of gator clips on the top of it. It uh, doesn't have to be a fancy device to put our plus and then uh, there we are. This is a bright white LED as you can tell by the color. Uh, the warm whites that I sell are uh, much much closer to an incandescent. Uh, they have more of a yellowish hue to them. And so, uh, so the LED is now soldered. 
and I'm going to twist it up. I always just take and kind of string everything out, grab it at the top, and then just roll it between my fingers. Sometimes you have to wipe the sweat off your fingers, and I've even got uh, some uh, sort quick uh, finger rosin because some days my fingers just won't roll the this fine wire. And then I take and uh, uh, dip this in in enamel. Uh, it can be as uh, simple as nail polish or otherwise uh, and let it dry and um, and there you have a pre-wired LED assembly the uh, now if you want to use these uh, if you buy a pre-wired assembly and you want to install this into a a hole but you want to keep the hole incredibly small you repeat the exact same process on the back end and just simply take your iron remove the, uh, the resistor and then to put it back together. Uh, you don't have to have the the tinning flux but it sure makes it a lot easier. Um, and, and by the way this tinning flux uh, is just really the secret to good solder joints period. It'll, it, it allows the solder to flow. Uh, keeps from uh, ending up with, with big nasty solder joints and um, you just get a nice, smooth, clean looking joint every time. And so uh, we've removed our, our resistor. You could remove the other one, fish that through a really tiny hole. I think uh, an, it'll go through a number 80 drill bit. So uh, the wire is, is really, really, really small uh, when it's double wrapped. And then you'll just hold that up to the wire and just touch it ever so quickly with the hot iron and there you are. Good luck. Visit us at sbsfordcc.com. Thanks.